We just want to um, um, have you be more attentive in, in your comings and goings. Um, the numbers are the greatest numbers that we've, we've seen um, ever in Molokai right now. And uh, some of you have heard many, you know, different events where they have taken place. But just to know that um, it's about this period of time. Uh, there are certain businesses have cut back in different things in um, how you do your shopping. Um, there's certain business, there's no visitors now allowed in Queens Hospital. So they're, they're, they're tightening their belt. For about maybe 10, 15 days, they're gonna do this because of the spike on uh, the COVID accounts on Molokai. So just be aware of that, be conscious of that. And so um, in our Sunday service, and our new service, we normally do this during the night, but we're gonna promote that families, if they wanna do a special um, on Sunday, next Sunday, being our first Sunday of the year, to bring a song, a testimony, an exhortation. It's kind of gonna be our um, uh, bringing in our New Year feature, okay? So, again, instead of having that pre-service that we normally have, bringing in the New Year's, we're kind of transferring that service or that mindset for service Sunday next, next uh, this coming Sunday, okay? So if you have a special, uh, short exhortation, a song special, if you want to be grouped with another family, you can or whatnot, but you know, you you have six days to, kind of seven days to work on it. So get 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 going, right? Okay. So that's kind of um, my announcement. So bring your loved one. You bring a friend to help you. You know, pull off your whatever you're gonna pull off. You know, and, and so um, that's next next week Sunday. Okay. I think uh, the other announcement is that men's the men's gathering. We have a men's fellowship that has been gathering every month. And we are the host church of the gathering. Um, so far, we're still going to have it. Um, e even with the spike, we're going to have it. We just want people to be a little bit mindful because of the spike on Moloka'i. Um, but still, we're going to live our lives. Amen? Just be mindful, but we're going to continue to live our lives. Um, so we do have a men's gathering we're hosting the men's fellowship this Thursday. Um, excuse me, the first Thursday. So it's going to be, let's see if we have it. Up. The coming, coming up Thursday, it will be January 6th. So we, we are hosting the men's night fellowship. It starts 5.30 and we'll have a meal. If you want to come, invite some men or you know somebody that could use the fellowship. We, we are the host church for the men's. Um, for some of you who don't know about it, there's about 10, 12 different participating, maybe 15 different churches. A brother said, man, there's a church in between. Two miles or every, everywhere you look. So a bunch of them, are, we as men's, we have, we're gathered once a month, and this Thursday will be on here on Thursday night, 5.30. Okay, so continue to pray for the fellowship as they the men's meet and um, okay, I think I got through all my announcements. Okay, so we'll pray and we'll get into the word and uh, amen. Let's do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, because um, you're so good, Lord. And we just give you praise and glory. We pray an anointing upon the reading of your word. Father, anoint our ears and our hearts that we may receive of the word, God. And Father, more than that, not just a people that hears your word, but let us be a people that applies your word in our, our lives. I pray that we are a people that would hide your word in our hearts, that not sin against you, God, and apply it to extend the kingdom of God to all the earth, to the marketplace in our families, Lord, in our community, to all the ends of the earth. So anoint and bless, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, again, happy belated Christmas, everybody. <laughs> I know most of us, we haven't seen each other, us, you know. This is the only time we kind of see each other if we Sunday service, and some of you have never seen you for a while, and 
Well, that's why I want to just extend the aloha to say Malikaliki Makkah uh, to all of you. Um, this being, again, uh, a significant Sunday is because it's kind of the last Sunday of 2021. Amen? Never going to happen again. Once this Sunday is gone, it's gone. Amen? And as we, as we ponder and we think about just the things that we've been through, um, and as I said earlier on as we started service, um, what a ride. What a ride 2021 has brought us up, down, sideways, and upside down. And, and, and as Sister Lay said, man, we, we, can, we know our source and our life. And we are so blessed to know that God is in control. Amen. 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 Of all the things that goes on, we know that God is in control. He is on the throne. Amen. Amen. We can sit well with that. Our lives go up and our down and our feeling goes around and we're in the whirlwind and we're in the fire, but God is there with us. Amen. Amen. To the, to the, what, what's the saying? To hell and hell, um, hay water, it's whatever. God is still on the throne and um, that should seek, that should bring a comfort that he is the same yesterday, today and always, Amen. forever. Amen. That things will come and go, and things will pass, but His word will never. Amen. It is always and forever. Amen. And uh, as I think of these things, we ponder that this is the end. So if I had given the title this morning, it's the end. Amen. Thirteen neighbors says the end. The end. <laughs> da -da -da. It's the end. As I think of the end, there's such a significant factor of the end. And, and, and I want to take you on this mind journey. And for some of you, you have maybe heard me say this <coughs> last year, right about this time, the end. <laughs> it always comes back to the end. And next week, guess what's the title probably going to be? The beginning. The beginning, yes. See, you guys know me too well. Amen? Amen. But when you, when you think of the simplicity of it, right? I'm a person that when we see current events, my mindset is, what does the Lord have to say about that? Amen? Amen? Amen. When Christmas comes, you, you hear a Christmas message. When, when the Easter comes, you hear the resurrection message. But it's times, the promotion is that when you, when you live your life, you may see and understand or try to um, dive into the word to say, what is God saying about what season I'm in? What, what is God saying about now? And not about anybody else. But what, what is he speaking to you? What season are you in? And, and, and as I said before, man, we go through up seasons, down seasons. God is always there. Amen. Amen. God is always there. And so, as, as we... Think about the end, because it is the end of 2021, and he's brought us through. Amen? Amen. That's your Amen. He brought us through because he's still here. <laughs> Amen? And so when I think of this, I really think of a greater, kind of a bigger picture. Amen? I think about the, the end. When, when my day is up, that's going to be truly the end of the end. But it's actually the end of the beginning. Amen? If you know what I'm talking about. But it's so more important to me that when, when you're thinking about the race that we're running, and if you didn't know if we're in this race, we are. They call us the human race. Amen? And we always, you know, it sounds like a, 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 a definition that they, they um, designate uh, when they say human race, animal race, or they're just designating, categorizing who we are as uh, human beings. But I like to think about it when they say the human race, we are literally in a race. Amen? Amen. And at the end of the race, there's a prize. Amen? Uh, when you go into the race, there's always a, a, a goal 
and a prize at the end of the journey, right? You don't just race for nothing, but some guys feel that they might be racing for nothing because they don't know what they're racing for. But we, we should know that there's a prize at the end of the race. And that's why we're in this human race. In 1 Corinthians 9, journey with me today as we read, what race are we in? And what is the goal at the end of the tunnel, right? The end. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, if you got your Bibles and if you want to follow along with me, or just listen along with me, but there's Bibles in the pews sitting all over the place. But in this journey in 1 Corinthians, verse 24, I'm reading from the ESV version. It says this. Do you know, do you not know that in a race all the runner runs, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable crown or wreath. But we are imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But discipline my body and keep it under control. At least after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Amen? And so this race that we run, we run to obtain heaven's throne. Amen? If we didn't know it, or some people, they're in this race, and they're not knowing that the end result or the goal that we want to obtain is heaven's throne, or being in the kingdom of God eternally. And so, when I think about this, I think about, yes, it's important of getting in the race or understanding how you started, the beginning, right? The beginning of the race. There's a, there's a fairy tale or there's a wonderful children's story about a turtle and about a rabbit. Amen? Many of us has heard it. Um, that there's a turtle and a rabbit. And they're in this race. And as soon as they say, go, the turtle is off to a slow start. <laughs> and the rabbit is, phew, he's down the road, amen? Phew, he's down the road. The rabbit gets so far ahead and said, man, that turtle, I think I take a nap or I'm going to goof off a little bit, right? And man, there's some story. There, 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 there's, there's something to learn about that. Amen? When you think about the turtle and the rabbit, or the hare, and ran the race. But as the rabbit runs and starts goofing off, sidetracking up, the turtle is going slow and good, going to the finish line. And if you ever heard that story or that, you know, kill children book, who wins the race? The turtle. The turtle wins the race. Amen? The rabbit, oh, man, I, I goofed off so much. That the turtle is over there. So now he's trying to catch up. The turtle wins the race. Amen. The honu. And then the local guys come and take him apart. And then, no, 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 no. That's another story. That's another story. No, I have to be food story. Wow. Rough then. Rough. For but the point that we're looking at it, sometimes when we look at our spiritual walk, it is good to be the turtle. That we slow, but it's so good. Amen. We're moving forward unto the Lord and the walk that we have with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes the rap, but he let go here, but he let go there, and he gets sidetracked here, and he gets sidetracked there, but he gets sidetracked by not of the things of the Lord. Amen. What that are things are important. And so when we look at this, it isn't. It, there's some importance of beginning the race, the middle of the race, but the most important part of the race is the end. Amen? It's not how you began the race. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I meet Christians. 
near and far. And interesting, a whole bunch of Christians, they really, they, they tell me, oh, I was baptized on this month, this day, and this time. I said, oh, right on. I can't remember when I was baptized. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. I, I know it's an important deal for many people. But praise God, I, I know it was sometime at this age, and you know, um, I've been baptized a few times, uh, you know, this time I was baptized, and that time I was baptized. I don't know, you know, everybody have their own story. But I know the story is this, that it, it's important to get started, but it's more important to finish the race. Amen. It is more important than end. How you started, praise God, and how you came into the race, praise God. But it's really the hooray in the background is finishing this race. Amen. That on that time that the Lord can say, Good, well done, my faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Come into the house of the Lord. Amen. That's the desire. I mean, that's the that's the prize. That's the goal. That's what we're racing towards or racing to. And it's every day that we're racing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, and um, I tend to think when I look around at other people that I know some of us, we know we're in a race. And those who know in the, that we're in this race, they look at it differently. They don't really call it a race anymore. They call it a war. That we're in a spiritual war. The things that we that we see, and then when we walk, we're in this spiritual battle. Not only for uh, continuing to walk in our own salvation, but for the souls of others. Because that's the heart of God, that none shall perish, but all come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. And if that's His heart, then it should be ours too. Amen? I mean, there's a lot of different things that goes on in a Christian walk and in Christian faith. But I encourage that we'll be a people at the, the heart of God, the will of God, the purpose of God. That we're just not just frolicking for our own salvation, but the heart that blesses the Lord in, in our gift, in our talent that we can give, but also moving in step in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, I don't know about you, but when you first, when you first come to know the Lord, when the, the light bulb comes on, because many of us, we've heard about Jesus Christ, and we heard the stories and all that, but somewhere in our life, we come to a reality, this is what we believe. And, and, and the Lord makes full proof of who He is in our life. Everybody has a different story on how they came to the Lord. But it, 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 like for me, many of you, when you come to know the Lord or you realize that Jesus is the only way to get to heaven, that you figure it out, that you understand some of the basic principles of Scripture that tells you that He's the truth, the way, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father but through it, there's a reality that sets in. And when it sets in, guess what happens? You turn kind of cuckoo. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's not what happened to you, but it happens to me. That I turn cuckoo because then I'm like, I want my brothers to be there. I want my sister to be there. I want my aunties to be there. I want my cousins. Then everybody, you want everybody to reach heaven's throne. Amen. That's the heart of God. That's the will of the Father. That none shall perish. That the hell wasn't created for mankind. But heaven was. An eternal glory. Amen. And sometimes in, in, in this life that we live, this journey that we're on, man, it's rough. Amen. It's rough. We go up and down. You know, he had made us to be compassionate people. And it's rough. And sometimes... We're just like that bunny. Oh, stage left. 
I don't know if you're not that bunny. Oh, look at the butterflies. Look at the butterflies. Ooh. Oh, we lose focus at times about the race that we're in, about the war that we're in. But then we say, you know what? No mind about the butterfly, no mind about the body. Stay the course. Amen. Amen. Stay the course. Amen. And as you stay the course, you, as you look up, as you see the Lord, as you stay your eyes on the Lord, amen, a couple of things that don't happen, that happen, you don't sink in the water, amen, you see things differently, you receive things differently, when, when this is, when this is good, amen, then this is good, yeah. amen, when this is good, this is good. Amen. When something's happening, when this is like that, then it becomes like that. Amen. When this is good, this becomes good. And it's so interesting that when we look at the cross, we understand that when we worship, when when we're okay with the Lord, when things are okay with the Lord, amen. That doesn't mean that you're gonna go through a storm or you're not gonna go through a storm. It just means that you'll be stronger to go through the storm. Because you're either in a storm right now, the storm is on its way, <laughs> or you just got out of the storm, okay? You're either in the storm right now, the storm is coming, or the storm is just passed, amen? So if, if, if you don't think so, just, just wait a little bit. <laughs> just wait a little bit, because there's one coming, <laughs> And in the back of there, there's another one coming. It's interesting as we live our lives, as we think of things like that, we, we, things are just coming in waves and mountains. We're in the top of the mountain and into the valley. We're on the top of the mountain and we're in the valley again. I know that he is the lady of the valley, that he is the river of life. May we be the tree planted by the living waters that would bear good fruit in his season, amen? The, that our grass would not wither but produce an abundance of fruit for the glory of God. We're in this race. We want to keep on, keep on keeping on. There's a couple of scriptures I want to share with you. My, my time. Okay, a couple more scriptures. In, in Mark 13, it tells us, Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who endures on Ipaha, stand firm to the end, will be saved. Amen? And I added a few phrases in there, right? But, so it's not, a, there's some importance of the beginning. There is some importance about the middle. But it is of great importance of the end. Amen? I don't know about you, but growing up, I think mo most of us, we participate and it's part, part of all, um, the curriculum in school that you got to go PE. And from PE, most of us do baseball, basketball. And we, we, we learn calisthenics, jumping jacks, push-up, and different things. And uh, every time when I was a small kid to was growing up, the coach always used to tell me, run past the finish line, run past the finish. I don't know if you, that's familiar with you guys, but say you're running one lap or 20 laps. Every time you come close to the finish line, even though the coach is yelling, run past the finish line, run back. I don't know about you, but my body stopped slowing, <laughs> slowing up. I don't know. It's just me, probably. I'm just cuckoo. But anyways, as you're running, you know the end is near. You start slowing down, figure, okay, I'm going to power anyway, so I'm going to start slowing down. And the coach always used to say, run past the finish line. You know, for many years, I never understand that. But then, then when I started maturing and understand the, the, the spiritual understanding of life, 
I see how there's a great importance of running past the finish line. Amen? Most times, if not every time in my life, every time I ended something, I started something new. Every time I ended something from a job to a relationship, from everything that I've gone through, it seems to be an end. And I find out how you end in this venture really uh, is the start of a new venture. There's always an ending to a beginning. And how you end really determines how you will begin. Amen? You follow me? If you end it really lousy, then your start becomes not so great. But if there's a strong ending, there's a new strong beginning. And so you, you haven't kind of missed the mark. So again, it is important to finish strong than just finishing. Let me give you the understanding, true spiritual understanding. There's some people that just making it through heaven's throne. They're on their diet. They're just seeping in and getting into heaven's throne. But for, Lord forbid, it's not you or me, right? I, I get plenty of time as you meditate in the word or you think about the Lord and how things work in, in the spiritual realm. I don't know about you, but when I was a really small kid, I used to pray to the Lord, Lord, are you real? And you stay up at night and you're thinking like, is there a heaven? And you would cry. And I would cry and I said, I would cry and said, I, I want to be with my parents forever. I, I don't want them to ever leave me. And, and I would cry at night. And then as I grew and understand about the Lord's love, I said, my parents will always be with me. I will always be part of them, and they will be always part of me. And my hope in that glorious day, they will meet again. I, they might not be with me here physically, but they're always with me. I'm part of them, and they are part of me. I am my father's son. I am my mother's son. Amen? And I will be their child throughout all the journey. They're with me. Amen. Amen. And so there's a significant in it. And so it, as I was a young person growing up, and even now I ponder on a heaven, and people are just making it there. They live their life. Some people, they live their life as a Christian, and at the end, they give up of being a Christian. And they try to talk. And then you get these other people. They live their life like devils. And then at the end, they turn a towel and they ask the Lord, and they, they reach heaven's gate. Mm -hmm. And then you scratch your head and you say, God, what is going on? Well, as long as you get breath, you get chance. Amen? Amen. Amen. As long as you get breath. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 13, one of my favorite scriptures, but they're all my favorite scriptures. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever... Call it upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. They never say, only that guy, this person, that girl, at this time, if they call on my name, they go, no. They, the, the Bible says, whoever, whosoever. Amen? Amen? So as long as you get bread, you get chance. That's a cool, yeah. awesome. And so what I'm saying, finishing the race, some guys are just making it in there. Yeah? Only at the deathbed, or only when they're in the plane. Thank God for bumpy rides. <laughs> Amen? The atheist becomes the believer in a bumpy ride. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> okay, okay, get me out of this one. This is my last ride. It's almost like, I don't know about you, but we've been praying that prayer when we came back from San Diego. Because, you know, some places are bumpy and it's night and you're thinking at home. Oh, Lord. Take me, take me quick. <laughs> but <laughs> in some sense, you know, you it really exercises your faith. You've been in a bumpy ride. I don't know about you, but I'm praying. I'm sweating and I'm praying heaven's throne, man. So, okay, Lord, if it's my time, then take me quick, Lord. Take me quick. 
But, you know, it's like every puppy, right? <laughs> it, it could be me, I'm just cuckoo. Mm. Mm. But people are, people are just making it in, you know? And we want to pray that's not my loved ones. They're just seeping in at their last breath to ask or to reach out for the Lord. I want to encourage you to continue to give other people an opportunity to call upon his name. Tell them about Romans 10, 13. Tell them, you know, some guy is so stubborn, right? Blinded, because we were, I was, blinded from the light, scales on my eyes. I would hear about Jesus. I would hear about this. And, you know, I was a big skeptic. I, I believe that religious people only wanted money, that they only wanted your money, and they would run away and buy some fancy car, some fancy house. And then I would li listen up to the radio. I said, man, they're so phony. Amen. I still watch the, the different TVN network, and uh, I wasn't used to it because we're from country, right? We're from old school, from King James Version. And you'd watch the television late at night, and when I was a small kid, you watch it all different kind specials on TVN. And you get these fantastic speakers, and when they speak, there's like music in the background. I don't know if you heard this, but they said, and God said, bam, 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 you know? The Lord, bam, bam, bam. And then I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, these guys are so phony, man. I said, man, it's so phony. And then the new word infomercial comes on, oh, for a free gift, please donate at this cost and that cost. You can have the spring water, the healing water, and it, you know. And, and so for, for a long time, I was really skeptical and judgmental. And then one late night, one late night, I decided, I said, ah, you know, I, this is probably not you, but you couldn't sleep, like 2 o'clock in the morning, and you flipped into all the channels. And so one late night, I flipped into one channel. And uh, they were they on preacher, one of those preachers with the background music, like rap, 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 rap. So I said, okay, okay. I'm in for some laughs. Let me go watch this preacher a little while. So I'm watching a preacher, and he's preaching this word, and get all the music and the bells and the whistles going off. I think to myself, nah, this guy's so phony. And then I started listening to the guy, and he was preaching the word of God. And I was listening to the word. And you know what? Before, before I, I was captivated with God's word. I was captivated of the journey he took me on. And, I, the music faded away. The background faded away. But the word of God pierced my heart. And as I listened to him minister to the word of God, I cried, I cried. I was so judgmental. I was so judgmental to, to look at other people and how they worship and how they deliver the word of God. And I would be judgmental of thinking that they was only reaching out people for money when he really was reaching out people for the salvation of their souls. And I was so, I felt so wrong that I asked for forgiveness. Because as I look at other people on how they worship, I shouldn't judge them on how they worship the Lord. Whether they clap, they dance, they sing. They don't clap, they don't dance, they don't sing. Their, their worship is their personal worship to the Lord. And I was so convicted in that. But it brought me another freedom, freedom of understanding that we all, we worship differently. We, we see things differently. But it's okay. It's okay. There are certain fundamental things in Scripture that you believe in these fundamental things, then I can worship with you, even though you don't want to clap. You may be white, I may be brown, you may be black, you may be yellow, I may be green, maybe orange. But if you believe in the same principle that I believe in, then then we're good. Then we're good. You know, um, I've learned a lot of things since then that when you're in the war, the guy next to you, as long as his gun barrel is facing in the same direction as your gun barrel, we're good. 
If you turn around and his barrel is facing you, you're in trouble. Amen? You're in trouble. But as long as I'm up by my brother or my sister, and we're facing the same gun barrel is facing the same way, we're good to go. Amen? Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen? Come into the presence of the Lord. A few more scriptures and we're going to wrap it up. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a uh, cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen? Run with endurance. And lastly, my last scripture of, um, or my second to the last, Matthew 24, verse 13. It says, But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen? So there's an importance as we endure, as we continue to, like the turtle, just so good. Okay, one more story, and then I might wrap it up. Because it'll be my second, third closing of the day, and that's about pretty close. Okay. When I first was ministering, and I was in, I wasn't uh, ordained as a minister yet. And uh, Pastor Umi took me under his wings. And we were praying if this would be the, the life that I would live. And he was praying if this was the guy. And I was praying if I was the guy. And uh, he would have dreams and he would share with me dreams. And I would have dreams and I would share with him the dreams. So one dream he shared with me was that in his walk he noticed that every time the Lord promoted him, it was through the word and he would move up the ladder through the word. In his dream he seen himself in the word and moved up and in the word and he was moving up in the word. And then when he looked back, there was a young fellow coming up in the Lord. And he, as he was coming up, he was coming up quick. But then as he was coming up in the Lord, he started to go back down in the Lord. He was going up real quick and then he started going back down. As he turned around and he yelled, to the young fellow coming up. Open the books. Open the books. And he woke up. And so he would share that with me. And we would share other dreams and other things like that. And to me I was really inspired that. In our spiritual walk. The value is in the word of God. The foundation is through the word of God. And it's not about striving to be that great, majestic star. I'm good with the term. Amen? I'm good to be the term. So my dream that I had, after his dream, I had this dream. And uh, in this dream, there was a shooting star coming across the light, the night sky. And in the shooting star, Man, that thing was majestic. It was like fireworks. That bugger had a nice rainbow-like tail that, that threw different colors. Bright orange, green, yellow. It just was bursting up. It's coming through the night sky. It was amazing. As you looked at it, you just was in awe of the, the color and the beauty of it. And, then it. and then the next thing I knew it, I was in another mindset or a vision I didn't see the shooting star anymore. I just seen one lonely star. And it was burning like that. At a distance, keep on burning. And just burn through the night sky. And slow and steady, it just burn. So I woke up in the morning and I was like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> you think about it yourself, okay. And I pondered on it, and I, and I thought to myself as a young man, hearing Pastor Umi's vision or his dream, 
and then try to match them up with what I see, my interpretation of understanding that I, as a young man back then, some 20 some years ago, was that I could be this guy. I could be that shooting star, really flamboyant, you know? Man, I'm action and theatrical. Maybe even some music in the background. Bam, 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 bam. Or I could be that faithful star and keep on shining. Because there's something that happens with shooting stars. They burn out. They look really nice in the night skies. But before you know it, they burn out and hit the ground. But that other star, that just stays there night after night, burns, and you can see it. It's a faithful star. You can count on that star. It'll be there in the night sky to bring light. And so I want to encourage you that you be that light. Amen? That you stay the course. That you run the race. Amen? That, that it's not, you know, if you, we fall down, we dust ourselves off, and we go again. Be blessed so you can be a blessing. Amen? You're blessed to be a blessing. That's the word of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call the worship team up. <clears throat> We're going to do a closing song, a closing prayer. Don't forget, next week, Sunday, if you're joining us, please bring a short exhortation, a song special. You can even do a dance if you want. <laughs> a short one, right? Don't, don't let me get the hook and hook you off the hook, you know? Some of you guys, you guys can dance all night. All right. Okay. Okay, shall we stand as we uh, close in a word of prayer? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy for it endured forever, oh God. Help us hold fast to your word, Lord God. We just pray your anointing, Lord God. Your spirit be upon us, Lord God. Give us holy boldness to declare your love. Be a witness of it, God. Give us wisdom, God. Then we may witness with love and mercy and not with judgmental and being um, judging other people over God, but loving other people. And so, Lord, we thank you, God, as we end this 2021. We just declare that you are God and Lord of our lives, Lord God. You are the one, the true God that reigns supreme. And it's through your Son, Lord God, we find salvation. So take us home safely as we depart from one another, but never from your presence. We say we love you, God. We just bless you. We love you. All this we say in Jesus' name, on God's people said. Amen. Amen. Amen.